Well, stand tall and wear that crown, honey. And let me tell you, that crown comes with a lot of responsibility. It sure does. So what does it really mean to be Miss Pennsylvania and Miss Pennsylvania's teen? And, and this, this is Chick, Chick to Chick. Chick. I think at some point in their lives, every little girl dreams of being in some sort of a beauty pageant mm -hmm. and wearing the crown and wearing the sash and all of the beautiful gowns mm -hmm. and doing all of that. I think every little girl looks at that like, oh my God, that would be so cool yeah. to be able to do that. And I know you were recently a judge at a beauty pageant, which I think is really, really cool. What was that experience like? Oh, it was amazing. So I was a judge for Miss Pennsylvania uh, through the Miss America organization. I had never done this before. I had, fun fact, been into pageants before. See? I there loved you it. Go. Did not get the crown. Doggone it. Not. <laughs> Doggone it. <laughs> so I, I tell you, being a judge and seeing these young people and how intelligent and poised and fun and and just just brilliant young people, it really did make me feel like we're gonna be okay in this world. And I tell you, the the experience being a judge was a blast. But I think there's a lot of misconception. I think people look at this and think, oh, those girls are just wearing their pretty dresses and getting all made up and oh, they no. have their crown and their sash and then it's over. Right. Well, the competition <laughs> and those pageants are a lot of work. Yes. But it's after mm -hmm. the pageant and the competition when the real work begins. Yeah. You know what? We have two amazing young women who are going to shed some light on this. We have our Miss Pennsylvania, who's Miranda Moore, and our Miss Pennsylvania's teen, Lizzie Shacklett. They are both joining us today. How are you two? We are so good. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> yes, thank you for having us. I'm so excited. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, I, I love to see you both with your sash and your crowns on. It's so beautiful. This question is for both of you, and we'll start with Miranda. Why did you decide um, that you wanted to get into the pageant? I actually started competing just a couple years ago. So I'm 25 years old. And a lot of time when I talk about doing pageants, people think I've done it since, you know, I was in diapers. And I really just started recently. And the reason I started was for scholarships. The Miss America Opportunity provides tremendous amounts of scholarships to young women. And I was graduating college. I knew I wanted to go to grad school. I was looking for a little bit of extra scholarship money to help make that possible. And this happened to be the outlet that I went. And I always joke I came for the scholarships and I stayed for everything else because it was all of the professional development, meeting the young women, the networking opportunities that really led me to continue to compete in the Miss America opportunity and winning the scholarships has been just a huge benefit. I've paid entirely for my program at the University of Pennsylvania with scholarships. So I'm going to graduate school for free because of this organization and it's changed my life. Wow, what an answer, great answer. I Lizzie, know. how about you? Yeah, that's amazing, Miranda. So I'm actually a competitive Irish dancer, and I was on the Irish Dancing Magazine social media team with another Irish dancer out in California. And she had just been crowned Miss California's team that year, and she said, Lizzie, you have to do Miss America. So that fall, I signed up and competed for my first local competition, and then I advanced to the state competition. And as I became more and more involved in Miss America, I realized that it had so much more to offer than just Irish dancing and just performing your talent on a stage. Like Miranda mentioned before, obviously these scholarship opportunities are amazing and also the friendships and the sisterhood that will last for a lifetime. Hmm. It's true, but I think what's really incredible is the fact that of all the things you said, the one thing that I think is amazing is that the platform, it's basically what you are giving back to the state and, and to the community. So Miranda and Lizzie, explain to us what platforms that you chose when you were running. My community service initiative is titled Take Action in Fashion, and it's all about sustainability in the fashion industry. I am an environmental engineer and a sustainability professional as my career. And when I was learning about different industries and different impacts of sustainability, I learned that the fashion industry is one of the highest polluting and most dangerous mm -hmm. industries. It's actually more polluting than transportation and construction. And we contribute over 92 million tons of fashion waste to our landfills every single year. So 
it's this huge industry. It produces a ton of waste. And it's also an industry that I actively participate in. And that, of course, I think the demographic that I reach as a young woman participates in, which is other young women. And so to be able to talk about, you know, being an outfit repeater, renting your clothing, not being afraid to be seen in the same thing multiple times and being willing to buy shopping secondhand and all that different stuff. There are a lot of different things that I get to talk about with how to promote sustainable fashion and not only the impact, but how we as individuals can help reduce that impact and make a difference. And I like to wear sustainable clothing as Miss Pennsylvania to help showcase that as well, which I think is a cool way to sort of tie it into the organization and the impact that I'm able to make as an individual. That is so important because yes. I think your generation is so caught up in fast fashion and yeah. I'm going to wear this once. Oh, I was seen in, seen in a in picture. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing it out. Just a little secret here, Miranda. We wear each other's clothes. We do. We do it all the time <laughs> because we agree with you. Yeah. This is a big, big problem and a big polluter in the environment. Lizzie, what was your platform? Well, one of the things that I love about Miss America is that every girl can kind of pick something that they're really passionate about and that they really want to advocate for. So my community service initiative is Literacy is Lit, Finding and Filling the Literacy Gap. And it began when I learned that one in four children in America grew up without learning how to read. Mm -hmm. And I was so surprised and astounded because literacy and the ability to read are such important life skills that are needed for success in life. And I also found that studies show children who grow up in a home with books Books are bound to develop those stronger literacy skills. And as an avid reader myself, someone who has been lucky to grow up with access to books, I knew I wanted that to be the focus of my initiative. So I have hosted book drives in my community to collect and distribute books to schools, community centers, shelters, and book banks. And through my initiative, I have collected and distributed over 11,000 books across the state of Pennsylvania and across the Mid-Atlantic region to help ensure that everyone has access to the resources they need to succeed. Um, I have also authored a children's book called I Read Before Bed, and I have created a program called Learning with Lizzie, which I've been so lucky to promote this year across the state in both libraries and schools. I think these I two girls need to host this podcast. I know. I'm like, I'm I know they're real slouches, blown. aren't they? Yeah. And you know, it is what? great. I know. And it's great, Lizzie, wow. too, because, you know, I think when you can see someone who is as dynamic as you and reading is cool, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, it's not that reading's not that cool. I love that. I think you, you, wow. you, you basically are telling kids, no, it, it's cool and it's good. So... What, right. And yeah. one of the things that makes me so sad about that statement, too, when I hear kids say that is you haven't found a good book then. If you don't mm -hmm. like reading, you haven't found a good book because there is a book out there for everyone and there is a book on practically everything. So you can find something that you're passionate about and read about it and learn from it. So that's what I really try to, you know, encourage yeah. kids to do and to look for. So that's why I'm grateful for this platform and for this crown so I can continue to spread my message across the state. Well, and you just brought something up. You have the crown, Miranda, you have the mm -hmm. crown. A lot of work, a lot of work to enter the competition and to be in the whole pageant and to win the competition. But what happens yeah. after the crown and after the sash? What responsibilities do the two of you have? And Miranda, let's start with you being Miss Pennsylvania. What do you have to do and what are the duties associated with the title? I love that you said earlier that a lot of people, when they think of Miss America and of beauty pageants, they think that winning the crown is the end. Mm -hmm. And really, it is just the beginning. And I think that any woman who's involved knows that and sees it as this huge opportunity. And for Miss Pennsylvania specifically, it's actually a full time job. So being Miss Pennsylvania is my full time commitment for the year until I pass on the crown to the next young woman. This is what I do as my career, as my day to day responsibility. And it's my life. And it's just the coolest opportunity that that is something that I get to do, that I get to do this full time and impact people across the state full time. And I love telling people that being Miss Pennsylvania is my job. I think it's so, so cool. And every day looks so different. And I think that's why when you're looking for a young woman to be Miss Pennsylvania, you're looking for someone who has a lot of different attributes who you can see getting on the ground with children, but also speaking in front of the Pennsylvania house floor, because you don't know what each day is going to throw at you. You check the calendar, you see where you're going to go and you get there on time and you hope for the best and you do what they ask of you and you ensure that you're representing the brand and the organization well 
well, but that genuinely looks different every single day. Today, I'm on a podcast. Yesterday, I was at a golf tournament. Tomorrow, I'll be at a fashion show. You know, I just don't know what the day is going to hold and what people are going to expect of me. And so to be able to be adaptable and dynamic and on my feet, I think is the biggest part of the job. And we also manage our social media channels. We manage our relationships with sponsors and all of those different elements as well on top of appearing and doing the job of Miss Pennsylvania. So it's a really multifaceted job, but one that I think has really pushed me in a lot of different ways and will benefit me when I return to my career as an engineer to be able to say I did all of these things for a year and had all of these incredible opportunities to just really grow and transform. I feel like they blow you away. I know she <laughs> she does a lot. I'm just I am I you know and I'm blown away. And, and Lizzie, you know you're still in school. So how is this right. for you? Yeah, so I was just going to say, I love everything Miranda just said. So for the Miss, it is definitely a full-time job. For the teen, obviously, I have to go to school, so it can't be a full-time job for me. But I do fit in multiple appearances throughout the week, as well as balancing my school schedule and balancing my dance practices and competitions. But like Miranda said, we just have so many amazing opportunities. And also, we attend so many diverse appearances as well. One day, I was meeting with a Superior Court judge, and another day, I'm going and speaking to children at a library. So truly the different audiences I connect with is amazing. So, And it's such a young age. I mean, yeah, really the, the poise that you have. Now, we cannot talk about this pageant without talking about talent. And they have talent. I mean, you hear how intelligent yeah, and so personable it. and yeah. amazing these two are. Okay, now they're going to explain to us their talent because their talent is absolutely incredible. So Miranda, you blew me away. You're going to blow me away again. And I'm not saying that just because... You play clarinet. <laughs> you have to I blow into something. The clarinet, Miranda. And my daughter played the clarinet. So, I mean, it's a joy. It's a beautiful instrument. Tell us about your talent. I wanted to do a really classical piece. I wanted to showcase the intricacy of clarinet. I wanted to showcase technique. I wanted to showcase 14 plus years of playing. And so I found a piece that I loved. It was Festive Overture by Dmitry Shostakovich, which is very clarinetty. I like to say it's just this very <laughs> clarinet centered piece. And I wrote my own original arrangement of the piece to fit into the 90 second time frame and really went through and constructed the piece around mm -hmm. highlighting all of the most technical and most interesting parts of the piece. And then, of course, course, putting that on stage, you also have to think of how you're going to communicate to an audience when for me, from here, you're not, can't express with my face. I've got to play an instrument. So communicating things with body movement, with my eyes, even just trying to find ways to connect with the audience when you're playing an instrument, I think is an additional challenge that was really cool for me to try to figure out. And Lizzie, what was your talent? So my talent is Irish step dancing. I actually began Irish dancing when I lived in Singapore in Asia. So that's another story. But when I moved back from the U.S., I started competitively Irish dancing, which is how I met my friend who was Miss California's teen who encouraged me to compete in Miss America. Something that most people don't know about Irish dance is that we actually keep our arms by our sides the whole time. In competitive Irish dance, we do not use our arms. But of course, kind of like how Miranda was saying how she had to adapt her talent for the Miss Pennsylvania stage. I had to adapt my talent for the Miss Pennsylvania stage as well. So I do use my arms and my talent to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more engaging, and a little bit more river dance, Lord of the Dance style. And you two ladies, you're getting ready to go on and represent Miss Pennsylvania on the national level. You have a national competition coming up. I believe it's in January. Mm -hmm. And we want to wish both of you the very best of luck you both are amazing. Yes. You both should be so proud of what you have done and what you have accomplished. And I, I'm just blown away by both of them. And I'm proud of both of you. I'm so grateful that you are the two representing the state. You're amazing. And I just have fun. Have a ton of fun. We will. Yes. Thank you. It's going to be an amazing once in a lifetime experience. So good. Good luck to both of you. Yeah. And thanks again. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. Thank you. Are they well, incredible? Yeah, wait, 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 wait. You just can't told even. me. I you, tried to you, tell you. You tried to tell me. And now you see. Wow. I, I'm blown away by both of them. I know. So poised, so articulate, yes. smart, talented. We're going to be well represented on the national level. Oh, God, I wish these girls so much luck. You know, we are so happy that you were with us today. Do us a favor. Head over to our chick to chick YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. And until we are back to chirp about another topic.